everyone and welcome back to the Women of Xbox UK podcast. I'm Charlie from the Xbox UK team and I am in the ever so wonderful position of getting to sit down with some of the most amazing women from across the industry and across the world to chat about, well, everything I want pretty much, I guess. Uh, whether you are watching or live on YouTube or listening through one of the many wonderful podcasting hubs, then I hope you're comfortable and ready to meet today's guest, Mojang Studios Chief Storyteller, Lydia Winters. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Charlie. Hi, this is so exciting. <laughs> it's very exciting. How are you today? You having a good one? I am great. We have some sun here in Stockholm, <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm super happy. It's like been very gray winter, so I'm ready for spring. Oh, I'm looking forward to hopefully some of those vibes coming to England. I'm doing my best to keep the sun out while we're in the English winter, but I think everyone's bored of it now. We just want the actual sun back. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I have sun on my screen, sun over here. <laughs> like, it's it's a good day. Catching rays <laughs> everywhere. Now, before we actually dive into it, Lydia, I want you to give everyone a quick elevator pitch of who you are and what it is that you do. Ooh, uh, I'm Lydia Winters. I'm the chief storyteller at Mojang Studios. I've been there for almost 10 years. So since the beginning of Minecraft, I've worked at all different roles across the company since we were... Uh, independent since acquisition and now I am our chief storyteller which means I get to do things like this and talk about Minecraft both out to our community and people across the world and also within our studios to make sure that we keep the heart of Minecraft. I love that. I love the idea that you are just, your day job is just holding Minecraft in your hands and being like, this is it. I love this. It's great. And I want to share it with everyone. It's just, it's just wonderful. And I'm so happy to be talking to you today. Um, so we're actually going to kick off and something I like to do at the start of all the podcast is some quick fire, rapid questions to get to get to know you as a gamer. Okay. Right. Don't freak okay. out. You've totally got this. I'm ready. These, these are your answers. There is no right or wrong answer. Okay. Don't overthink them too much. Just the first thing that comes to your head. Question number one, what's the first game you ever remember playing? Oregon Trail. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a good one. Do you want more of an answer or just like the... You can the, expand the, if you want. Yes, that is the first one uh, that I remember, which is a pretty dark version of games, I think, actually. Yeah. <laughs> what, what led you to play that first, I have to ask? I think it was in school because actually my family was very anti-gaming. Now my mom is like Minecraft's biggest like supporter. <laughs> oh, I love so that. she really, you know, did a full turn once I started. <laughs> but yeah, we were in a gaming house. So it was kind of like, I think in school on in like the computer lab interesting Trail. I wish yeah. I went to that school. That certainly wasn't on the ones that I went to. <laughs> I also, I learned to type from Mario Teaches Typing, which I was mean, like- is that technically, could you count that as the very first game you've ever played? I think Oregon Trail was first. Uh-huh. And then typing, but I'm not, I'm not sure. But I do feel like, like I remember playing it and you would make Mario jump by learning how to type. Oh, and I so love like, that. And so it's a great concept and yeah. I kind of wonder why, well, I guess it's not around because no one needs to learn how to type now. <laughs> Everyone just knows how to type now. Babies come out and they're already sending emails off. Like, hello. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So question two. What is, without a doubt, the best game you have ever played? Minecraft. Wow. I know I'm totally, I know I'm, I mean, I know. It's You're very, also not it's wrong though. You're also not very wrong, biased, so I'll let you off. But, okay. <laughs> Right, we'll go more into Minecraft later on. I won't let you expand on that one because that's the episode of the podcast. Uh, so question three. But if I could say second, yes. I'll do Animal Crossing. Okay, perfect. Are we talking New Horizons or one of the older ones? Well, I love the older ones, but New Horizons, I, I had to actually change, like I took away so that people could see the amount of hours played because I was, I thought it was, I thought it was too much. You know, it's the start of the pandemic. So I was oh, eating, yeah. sleeping working and playing Animal Crossing. And I was Where, like- In which you were also sleeping, working and eating. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. So it was like, it was a lot of work, yeah. Yeah, no, I remember, so uh, just, just to dwell on me for one second, I remember making a bullet journal for Animal Crossing of like recipes I wanted to find and like villages I wanted to hunt for. And I think that went through summer and then I got to the end of summer and I was like, I need to stop this. It's become another epidemic. <laughs> 
Exactly. I had, I had to kind of cut myself off because it was like, I finished so quickly that I didn't realize I got to the end of it. Mm. And it was like the credits rolled and I was like, wait, how many hours have you been playing? And I was like, I'm not really sleeping. So yeah, all the hours. And I was also making like notes of like, uh, especially like flower breeding. Yes. And uh, I made a whole set of Minecraft designs. So wow. like sweaters to kind of blend my my two loves <laughs> together. And they're so cute. So yeah, that was a fun way to like be creative. I, love I kind that. of miss it. I feel bad when I go back and visit them. And everyone's always really sad because you've not been there for ages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I got some villagers I didn't like, so now I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, ignoring them, moving swiftly on as you have already done. So yeah, question three. What is a game that you love, but wish, wish more people had played or even knew about? Hmm. Hmm. I played a game called Fantasy Life on the 3DS. Mm -hmm. um, and... It was like a little RPG game. I mean, like that people played, but I, I like I cried when it was done because I loved it so much, uh, which <laughs> has never happened in a game. Well, except Stardew Valley, uh -huh. when they re when they when I was playing beta and they reset everything, and I didn't oh know. no. <laughs> But that's a different was, kind of emotional reaction. It was isn't a it? different, yeah, it was. But I, I also did love that. But it, yeah, it kind of broke me, like. I can't play beta anymore because my world keeps getting reset. <laughs> Put too much love into it. Oh, no. um, yeah, but I would say Fantasy Life, I think, on 3DS. I loved playing on the 3DS and I, I love the Switch too, especially because, I mean, prior to this year, I was traveling so much. Mm -hmm. So just having like something portable to play, like playing a lot of games on my iPad and my Switch and my 3DS, it's just like I could play for all the flights every single flight and i think you you may well so you have got you've got the answer so you may have answered the next question but what is the one game that made you rage the hardest was it the stardew valley reset or was it another one it might have been the stardew valley yeah. because <laughs> i the thing was i was it's even worse because i was i was at home sick but I also was like, I am technically sick, but I'm going to play Stardew Valley all day. Like, you know, like settle in and kind of like imagine. And I just like opened my world and it was like, oh, now we like we updated. There's more things. And I was like, cool. Oh, yeah, this is why yeah. like we're in beta and everything was oh, gone. No. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I rage quit. I just like <laughs> like the like I was just no. And then. Yeah. I, I love the I, irony I, that, of them saying they've updated yeah. more things and in doing that they deleted all your things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were very I will say they were very clear everywhere about like this happening. Oh good. But, you know, it's yeah, it wasn't but it's still like I didn't realize what that would mean or how attached I was yeah. to like every cuz I was just like, "Oh, I'll restart and it will be fine." But I had found like a ship and all this awesome stuff and I was just like, no <laughs> yeah I really I was like, that was probably my biggest like rage quit I would say of just yeah being really upset amazing I'm looking forward to no one else on this podcast ever saying that Stardew Valley made them rage quit so I'm really glad you've given that answer today yeah uh, I know so I was gonna say my other one is Minecraft makes me rage quit a lot and that's also like really but I just I guess I have a very like intense way of play mm -hmm. perfect well yeah we'll we'll talk more about that and again I have a feeling that you may have answered this question already is it's either going to be Stardew Valley or Minecraft but finally question five who is your favorite video game character and or villain ever? Ooh. That one's hard. Mm. It's more difficult, I think, when you add the villain element in because I'm a big fan of villains. I think I could name more of those than I could main characters. I know, I'm like, games, characters. <laughs> I think I, I re I'm realizing I play a lot of open world games now because yeah. <laughs> I'm like, who do I, who do I fight? Um, 
But I, I will say, I do love Mario. Yeah, I think it's a I, you know it's just yeah it's just classic and it's fun and the world is is so enjoyable to get in and I think when you go into any of the the Super Mario games at, or within the Nintendo franchise mm -hmm. it just feels I think it's just remembering like playing with friends yeah. at friends' house when I was younger it just feels like it's a warm oh, hug my. it's familiar yeah it is yeah. Exactly. I I really Yeah, I'm gonna go with Mario. Yeah, again, no, not I love very that. original. <laughs> no, perfect answer. No, but like I personally I didn't grow up playing a lot of Nintendo products, so I don't have a lot of like nostalgia or connection to Mario growing up, aside from like my daughter plays Mario Kart 8 quite a lot. So for me, I know Mario is the person she always picks that hits me with a shell. So I know I, I completely I, I know when I'm fully aware of my time in the games industry that Mario is a significant character and absolutely yeah. I will allow him to be your favorite. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I love obviously my Animal Crossing characters, mm -hmm. but I actually, I, I rage a bit at uh, Isabel for, for for like telling me to do stuff. She was, <laughs> she told me to do a lot less stuff in New Horizons, uh -huh. but in previous games was like, hey, go pick up the leaves because you haven't been here. And I was like, no. <laughs> so yeah, I guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> Isn't she the villain of Animal Crossing? That's I mean, that's it's a, her that's and a Tom Nook, take. right? Those it's two working yeah, well, together. Yeah, I know. In a yeah, you you can't really dig into what's happening there. That they've like, There's yeah, something mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They they've sure. definitely taken over. They they own the banks. They own <laughs> like everything, and they're making you work for a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can't you can't think about it too much. Yeah, so maybe potential villains there. But anyway, I've got one final question <laughs> for you. I'm going to say potential villains up and out there. Uh, so we're asking each of our guests to give the next guest on our show, whoever they may be, a question to answer. It could be as simple or as complex as you like them to be. And our previous guest, Louise O'Connor from Rare, wanted to ask you, what is your absolute guilty pleasure that no one knows about and will definitely affect your street cred if they found out? Please say it loudly into the microphone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you look cornered. <laughs> Man, I that's a really hard question. I it it is a, it's a really embarrassing one and I do keep this one close to the chest. I I really I really will binge watch those like horrible Christmas movies. <laughs> like just you know unapologetically except mm -hmm. that I don't want anyone to know yeah so now I'm kind of like I should apologize because they're all terrible but it's like the worse they are the more I enjoy enjoy it as I'm just totally a, with like, you. exercise and like n this makes no sense it's terrible sometimes really tacky, like the general really roles. predictable <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's well, like Netflix have been doing all these ones with like Vanessa and Hudgings at the moment. Those are like yeah. I watch them every year. Or there's like the Christmas Prince or whatever they are, and they're just yeah. they're great. <laughs> they are great. They're just so they're so terrible, but there's something. It just you know it is just like being able to just watch something and just no. like not have to think. Like there's no thinking involved. No. Sometimes it's like if you start thinking. Mm. No, don't go down <laughs> no, that path. No, this is not for me. <laughs> you will not enjoy it. Yeah, you don't, you don't want. To. So I guess I will. I will pick that as my as my guilty pleasure. Perfect. No, I, I love that. No and at the end of the episode, I'm going to ask you for your question for our next guest. So make sure you're thinking on that in the background. But I guess we should move into the business, the meat of the podcast, so they call it in the industry. I'm guessing this is episode two. Uh, so there's always so much to talk about from the get-go. It can be really tricky, but I think we need to start with your very first experiences of Minecraft. Hopefully you know where this is going. And specifically, a little-known YouTube channel called Minecraft Chick. Now, I hope you don't resent me for this, Lydia, but for those of you who aren't watching over on the Microsoft YouTube, UK YouTube channel. Make sure you head over now. Go to this timestamp right now. Whatever, whatever time this episode is right now. Go to YouTube as we are witnessing the birth of modern day Minecraft storytelling with Lydia's first ever Minecraft Let's Play video complete 
with stunning pink wig. Now, before we play it, Lydia, is there anything you want to say before we see this? This was actually my first time opening the game. So I, I, I had only set up how to like record it, but I uh -huh. had not opened it. And I had not watched other people's videos because I wanted it to be a pure experience. All right, okay, well, let's, let's check it out. Here is Lydia's first YouTube video. <laughs> Hi, I'm Minecraft Chick, and this is my very first daily Minecraft video show. It's gonna be Monday through Friday, and I'm basically gonna go through starting from scratch. I love her. Okay, so this She's is so innocent. starting. I didn't I know, know how to make off. the screen bigger. That's sad. <laughs> it's so tiny. Look okay, at the alpha so as well. I'm so, I will say, I am so proud of you. The sort of, the tenacity and the confidence to go, I can't full screen this game, but I know how to record it and my camera, and I'm just gonna put it straight on YouTube. Exactly. I had this idea that they would be like, you know, like small episodes. Uh -huh. And so that was me sort of commenting on my own playing. Very mm -hmm. <laughs> meta. Now, Did you have a plan going into any of the episodes or was it just I'll record what happens and then that's that's how it goes? Yeah, I would just record what happens. I mean, later on when I started playing with other people, then I would have more to do. I love the controls up there just to remind me of what they were, but I had never played a game on my computer. So I, I didn't know WASC and uh -huh. like it was really hard to figure that out in 2010. Like Google was not friendly towards how do you walk in Minecraft? Yeah. Now you could find it. But oh, now there's tons of resources on Minecraft. Days, I've seen people yeah. speed run Minecraft in like 11 minutes or something ridiculous. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's incredible. And then this is what I do is just drown here. <laughs> like, so it's a real, <laughs> it's a real shining example, but it it's kind of why like my, my, like the community that watched me play so started calling it the misadventures of minecraft chick very because good it was just like whatever whatever happened so you know what before before the community what what was the decision behind why you why youtube why minecraft why the wig well how are we here today talking about this yes so Okay, the, we can rapid fire answer these. I had shaved my head for breast cancer research. Oh, amazing. Because I have a, a high chance of breast cancer mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to raise money. So I raised like $15,000 when I had no yes. one following me. Phenomenal. Um, and I shaved my head. I told everyone I would. My hair was like down to here. No one, I think everyone thought it was a joke. And I said, if I get $5,000, I'll shave it. Um, <laughs> and so it was just very cold. And so that was why I had the pink wig because actually I got it for uh, the Susan Coleman um, breast cancer walk. Okay. So I did that, the 60 mile walk and someone gave that to me. And so that's why I wore the pink wig. Mm -hmm. I started on Minecraft because some good friends of mine recommended Minecraft as a fun game. And actually I had just been making videos. And so I wanted to make videos and I was like, mm -hmm. well, I've never played games before. And they said, well, why don't you play from the perspective of someone who hasn't played games? And so that's <laughs> like what I did. Like the pop ups promising yeah, you'll know. make the game bigger in the future. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I could have, I could have just cropped it in, but yeah, it's, my goal was to like learn how to edit and learn how to be on uh -huh. camera and and just make like make content and it, i mean in 2010 youtube was very very early very, like this yeah. was this was something that you weren't seeing a lot of mm -hmm. i i think i'm one of the first if not the first uh woman playing minecraft online mm -hmm. um some of my old videos it's like really fun like i made a minecraft cake in real life and like these things that now i mean if you searched you would see tons and tons of of different people playing and and doing all of these different things but at the time it was a really small community it was the first time i ever met like online people mm -hmm. um because in my uh, in my life, I just was not, had not done that. So it just became so interesting to meet people around the world. And then we were seeing each other at conferences or, uh, you know, Skyping all the time, playing Minecraft. Yeah. And yeah, just 
yeah, now I can't imagine not doing that. I meet so many people online who become my friends, but at the Absolutely. time, I, whoa. And that's one of the core things with Minecraft is that, and you know, having someone who's put hundreds of hours into Minecraft myself, I found, you know, there's two different ways of playing it. And I've always found my most preferable way is with other people and having people on comms and, and hanging out and talking. It can be about the game or having a huge build you need to do, or just you're it's sort of like in the background and uh, relaxing vibe to just catch up with people. So I love that that community found you so early in, in your career as we'll be moving on to shortly because this is significant yeah, by the way it is it's it started my minecraft journey and you know it's a for the time it was quite a big quite a big channel yeah absolutely so how did how did the channel then become a role at minecraft because this was the step right how did that happen that's the dream for anyone who uploads a youtube video yeah, the I mean, the kind of funny thing is that it didn't, it wasn't linear in that way of like, oh, you make cool videos, why don't you work uh, on Minecraft? It was actually mm -hmm. that I was going to E3 in 2011, and I heard that the Minecraft team would be there. And so I just sent cold emails to <laughs> the CEO, and I said like, oh, I'm going to be there, I make these videos, but like in real life, I'm a serious person, whatever that means, so <laughs> probably not true. Serious. If you I don't said know. you're a serious person, you are not a serious person. You're fooling yourself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, I think I said like, I have a college degree, which I now I'm like, that's a real weird. Okay. Uh, but I basically said like, if you need any, anything, mm -hmm. uh, I would love to help. Like I'm only going to meet uh, the Mojang team mm -hmm. if it's possible. And luckily they had had someone who like couldn't go help like host the booth for okay. the Sony Xperia Play phone, which wow. is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> tiny, uh, like spacey little phone, um, 2011. And so Carl wrote back and he's like, hey, do you wanna do, you wanna do this? Uh, we could use you to do this. And I was like, yeah. Okay, so then I was working at the booth and like teaching people how to play Minecraft, which was ironic because I was terrible at it. It's like, <laughs> now the phone is tiny. I can barely oh. survive, you know, <laughs> on, a on a computer. <laughs> like, so they like send me this phone and I'm like playing the whole flight from Florida to LA. Like I, this is a lot. And so when I got there, you know, they were, they were so busy. I think there were four guys from the team. It was just, I mean, Minecraft 2011, everyone was like, we need to, we need this right yeah, now. Absolutely. So they're taking tons of Xbox meetings. I mean, I think they were just basically getting pulled all over. So originally I was like, oh, I want to interview them for my channel. How cool would that be? And I thought, I'm not going to bug them for things. Like, I'm just going to be helpful. Yeah. And it's already better than what I thought was to get to be at this booth. Mm -hmm. And so I introduced the CEO maybe f a few hours after meeting him on the first day wow. to someone that I knew online who had like applied for an artist role. And I don't know, as a total joke, I just like as I was leaving, he said, you know, the, the role is in Stockholm, Sweden. Would you be willing to move? And I just turned around as a joke and I said, it's too bad. I'm not an artist. I would totally move to Sweden. <laughs> and he was like, we want someone to work with the community. Let's talk about this later. And I was like, OK, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, meanwhile, I remember being on my phone, like, where's Sweden? Far north, it turns <laughs> where out. Where's Sweden? <laughs> Real north. I mean, I knew it was like, I'm the typical American from Florida. Like, it's generally European. Uh -huh, right? yeah. You know, it's it's in there. And they're just, oh, it's, it's far north. It's way up there. And over the course of, I think it was like three days, you know, Carl was like telling everyone, Oh, Lydia's gonna come back to Sweden with us, and you Blimey. know the the and we're gonna have an interview, and the the people at the booth were like, "Oh my gosh, you're gonna move to Sweden?" It's like, I, no, I don't think I don't think like I think this is what just a whirlwind. A thing. Um, and so I was super excited, but I was like, I cannot like sort of count this as, mm -hmm. you know, this is just they're these very more like shy guys and then they have someone who's totally willing to speak so i was like hosting everything mm -hmm. and they were like this is what we need 
And so we had talked about doing an interview and E3 was like, it was rolling on and it, they were about to leave. And I was just like, I'm not gonna bother them about this. They're like, oh, let's go sit outside and have an interview. So I actually have a photo of us sitting outside it, on my interview because someone went, came by and like they knew me and I had dyed my hair pink actually at the time. Cause I was like, <laughs> I can't be going in a wig. I'm a serious person. But you're going to call back to the wig with the hair color naturally. <laughs> exactly. We actually had like my parents, my mom and I had this big discussion around whether my brand was the wig or the hair color being pink. <laughs> <laughs> I love you had a branding yeah. conversation with your parents. This yeah. is exquisite. I love it. it. It leads to, you know, a lot of branding within Minecraft 100%. that I've done. So I guess, yeah. Hmm. but yeah, we, we interviewed... I just like sat outside and um, Daniel and Carl, who were more on the business side, were like, we we need a woman on the team and we think you would be perfect. Like, OK, we're going to head back to Sweden and, you know, then we'll we'll reach out. Remember, we're going to be jet lagged and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, OK, mm -hmm. cool. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> this is totally going to happen. Meanwhile, I was telling like my family, I'm going to move to Sweden. That was it. Um, Bags packed. I was like, wait, what? And yeah, I, I got back like two weeks later, Carl reached out and he asked me if I had, you know, if I wanted to write up like a few things I felt were strengths and a weakness. And I made a video back and I sent it as my like Wow. interview piece and he said it was the best application he ever got and i started working two weeks later so in june it will be 10 years oh which my goodness what a story as well and like just just to point out a couple things in the story you just mentioned then you were then technically the first woman to work at mojang studios you were also the first yes. non-swede to work there as well is that correct mm -hmm. yes exactly and you just you got yourself a passport off you went, you figured out where Sweden was and you started working on Minecraft. Yes, I I actually, so I worked from the US for around six months and then, you know, getting everything sorted out to move. But the funny thing is like, we were just a small team. Mm -hmm. We, you know, I was talking to the guys a few times a week and I never visited. And now I think that's so crazy. So when I moved, like I brought my stuff with me and I moved to Sweden. Wow. I wasn't like, we didn't, check it out or like do a month of like is this working it was like i'm here and i stayed in one of the guy's apartments who was out of town like that so it's it just reminds you of like the, how like old school tiny company mm -hmm. don't know what we're doing learning as we were going and that is exactly what we do now there's such a like nice process yeah <laughs> i was just that's... like i'm here I love it. And like, you know, before we move on to the next bit, I want to ask you a question, you know, because one of the things I really want this podcast to do is to sort of inspire people listening or watching, hello, YouTube, um, to sort of push themselves forward. I basically, just get yourself some Lydia energy and go, you know what? I can do this. I just need to put myself in these spaces. So like, is, do you think there's any concerns or around people putting themselves out there or even knowing enough, like maybe even having a gaming background? Like you said you didn't know Minecraft very well at all, but you still went for it and put yourself out there. Like, do you have any advice for people in that respect? Yeah, I mean, so I think when I, I was always very clear about not having gaming knowledge and experience and I was mm -hmm. more selling like, oh, I have big ideas. And so I like pulled some <laughs> examples, you know, like, oh, I yeah. had no followers, but I raised all this money for, for breast cancer research mm -hmm. and shaved my head. And so I think when you're thinking about like getting into gaming, show the things that will be an asset to the company and 100%. it doesn't have to be I've played a hundred hours of this game and I know everything and I can you know I am like amazing at at uh at every game there is across every space everyone's gonna do that yeah but instead I felt like I should show like why I would be good at it and like why they needed me and so even when I sent that video which is super like embarrassing now to listen to and it's it is not online actually it's it's just something that i sent them mm -hmm. i at one point i wanted i said that like my weakness was that i was like overly sensitive i wouldn't put it that way now like 10 years later i would probably say you know. but <laughs> i said i was overly sensitive and i actually shot 
a scene where I had like put makeup like all down my face and I was like, oh, I can't believe they said my hair was purple, it's pink. And that was my like, you know, me being dramatic. And then I said, but don't worry, like oh, I will totally solve this like in a proper way at the company. And like I had Nerf guns and I was like shooting my mom at the, you know, at the company. Oh my goodness, and I would have hired you. Any company would have hired you for that sort of production value. Are you kidding? <laughs> it, oh yeah, it was a high production. But the thing <laughs> was when I sent it, cause I was like, maybe this is like too much. And then I thought, if I don't show who I am yeah. and then I get the job, it's a lot worse to like move somewhere and not be myself. And so that's what I've always done. And I think Mojang Studios is a place where hopefully everyone feels that they can be themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of company I want to work at. And so I think being able to show things across your, um, across your hobbies and interests and like, here's what I've done here and here's what I've done here it can really help you move into into gaming if you haven't been there before. I, I just treated it as an asset. This is a great thing. Isn't it great that I don't know gaming? <laughs> and you know, in some ways it was and in some ways it wasn't, but it allowed me to have um, a way to really talk about why I would be good for it. And it's it's kind yeah. of funny because my, my role now, which I know we'll talk about later, kind of comes full circle because uh -huh. it's like, again, like I'm talking for a living. So I was hired because they were like, you like to talk, come back to Sweden. <laughs> Please it's, come talk you know, for us. <laughs> come talk for us. And that is, that is what I did and have done across my time. So it was, Amazing. A, it was a good hire. It was, yeah, just talk about being in the right place at the right time, but also being headstrong enough to to yeah. know, as you say, instead of saying, here's how I can work with your company, it's here's what I can add to your company. I think that's the exactly. real, really clear distinction then. Um, so, you know, we're going to talk more about my uh, Mojang now. So you've arrived in Sweden from the US, which takes, by the way, a lot of confidence, as we mentioned, to just uproot for a company uh, whose only real connection to you as well was the game itself and its community. So here I want to talk more about what it is about both Mojang Studios and maybe even Stockholm itself that created such a strong pull for you. So first of all, let's start with Stockholm itself. I personally have never been, um, but you know, what, what are the vibes like over there? It just looks really, it just looks like utopia. I won't lie to you. Yeah, I, I love, I love Stockholm. Originally, I kind of thought, oh, I'll, I'll work in Sweden, you know, become a Swedish citizen and then I can live anywhere in Europe. How cool is that? But mm -hmm. I just, I love Stockholm. I love Sweden. I, I think that, you know, so I grew up in Florida and mm -hmm. I mean, we have great weather, like 90% of the year, 98%. Like it's only that it maybe is too hot and it occasionally rains. I can't relate it, being English. Oh, that's yeah, not I us. Know. <laughs> exactly. But in Sweden, it's like 10% of the year is good and mm -hmm. the rest is bad. And it really makes you appreciate the days that there's sun. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's something there, like a lesson around, you know, kind of thinking about things differently and like having a, a new perspective. And like when I, oh, it's the sun's out in Florida no, and no one's running to be out in the sun. Whereas like <laughs> if, if the sun is out, I mean, I'm kind of upset actually. It's sunny and I'm not there, but I'm the so sound would sorry. be bad. But basically like I took a meeting upstairs in the sun because there's sun, you should do it. And mm -hmm. all of the rest of the company is doing that. So there's that, that like, deep appreciation for the weather and like good things and you 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 work to live and you don't live to work oh, so that is a huge difference i i think especially like being an american so it's always mm -hmm. like work 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 you know if you wanted to take vacation it's a big thing and you cannot take a lot together a lot of time together and sweden is very different like it by law in the summer, you can take all four weeks of, Amazing. of July off. So it's just a different work-life balance and, yeah. and emphasis. And how on does being that apply healthy. actually? Is that is that visible in the way things are at Mojang as well? Like is it is it more than just the game there? What's what's the culture like of you know, is is the the fact that you're in a such such a wonderful, open, accessible place also visible in the people in the company you work for? 
I think absolutely. I mean, we have an interesting thing because we have ha a, a large portion of our team in Redmond in the US mm -hmm. uh, on the Microsoft in the Microsoft area. And then we also have our team in Stockholm and we have some other people around the world. But I, I actually like what that balance brings because I think American culture is like very like maybe too abrasive and it's a lot and you know, you're full on. And then Swedish culture is like quite laid back, maybe a little laid back for, for someone like me. So mm -hmm. I find the sort of combination really nicely. But like I said, I think we wanted to create a place with Mojang Studios where people should be able to be themselves and that you don't mm -hmm. need to be like a work version and a non-work version, which That's I wonderful. found is way more, you know, way more common than I thought. Because yeah. to me, especially when we were a tiny team, it's like all of my friends were people I worked with. And so I was like, I can't imagine not just talking to them about whatever, and mm -hmm. this is how my life is. And so I think we try to maintain that sort of friendliness and and openness to people and, and also a shared purpose of people across Mojang Studios feel like Minecraft is really important because it is. Yeah. And I think that just allows you to be really excited about what you're working yeah. on. I, I imagine so there's I, quite I a lot that. of pride um, in what you do. And I'd actually, I'd love to know more about the impact of, you know, you say uh, you, you were the first woman to join the team. What happened from there? What What was it like starting in that environment and then sort of, you know, I'm, I'm aware now, I, I'd love for you to share more information on this, but I'm aware now that, that Mojang is a thoroughly diverse team. So what what sort of, what was the the work back of that, I get? How did you get to there? Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of, of pushing uh, from mm -hmm. myself and also from like amazing men on the team. Uh, for quite a while, it was just me and our, our CFO, <laughs> our former CFO, Karin. So the two of us were like, the women and um it it was really making a conscious effort and like continually talking about it i think i'm the one who who wanted to have uh like the alex skin in the game so it was both a sort of at in the company and also yeah within and the, our community. What the materials you were putting out yeah yeah exactly so it was a very big push i think a great thing was and this is part of like swedish culture too is is trying to be more equal mm -hmm. uh, especially with gender equality and so it wasn't like i was you know always pulling everyone along come on but yeah. it definitely i mean there were times when you're like i'm i'm the woman in the room and i'm the one who's gonna say as a woman yeah but you know what i i I did it and I'm really proud of where we are now because it's such a big, it's such a big difference and it's like not even, you know, it, it's, it feels like it's so much less of a, of a thing. Uh, we still have a long way to go, mm -hmm. uh, like every company I think to really be diverse and we have an incredibly diverse community. So how do we just Reflect add people that, that represent yeah. like this community across the world. So that to me is really, really important. And yeah, it's a, I think it's all this, the little steps and it's being very intentional. Mm -hmm. My, my biggest thing is that if you, if you say you want to hire more women, more people of color, you have to actually put that into your processes and Absolutely. practices and yeah. you have to make sure that people feel comfortable within the team. So it's like, there's so many levels to it that I think when, if you just have this like blanket statement of like, we would like to have more women here like that. Mm -hmm that doesn't just come to fruition. Yeah. It's the you questions practice you ask. What you preach. Yeah. I remember reading a small while ago, actually, that um, a lot of the language that employers use when it comes to job descriptions and references is actually quite gender exclusive. And that a lot of women will sort of read them and feel like this isn't for me subconsciously because of the way it's written. So it's those small, tiny tweaks along the way for businesses to acknowledge of, well, is this company diverse or not? Is it because mm -hmm. we're actually, you know, turning people away from the door before before they even get to the door. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you walk into an office and there's no one that looks or sounds like you, do you want to be there? And 100%. I think that's, you know, 
you can get someone in the door, but if they don't feel like there's anyone else or that they'll be supported, then mm -hmm. why do they want to stay? And I think you yeah. need you need a first for everyone entering. Yeah. So luckily I was a sort of, honestly, 10 years ago, like very naive and doe-eyed, like what's the world like? <laughs> I didn't know I had never traveled or been anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I think I was just the right mix of like naive and outspoken to be sure. like, I'm the first one, I'm here, this is totally fine. And, you know, even like my thinking 10 years ago was like, but it's fine because I work better with men anyway. Uh, it's just easier. And I'm like, no, that's not actually true. It's just what you say yeah. when you're the only woman all the time. Yeah, um, totally. And you know what? <laughs> I mean, we've said it, it obviously takes a hugely diverse team to make incredible games and also strive to improve. Um, we're going to show some footage now um, from the stunning Windows 10 ray tracing trailer um, of Minecraft at the moment, um, which, by the way, my PC is still not strong enough to handle. So I am dying to do this because honestly, look at it. Um, so b before we talk about Minecraft specifically itself, I just want to talk more about what it's what it's like on a day to day basis now for your role to work with a diverse team of people to produce content such as this. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, it's definitely been interesting when we're all working from home. Yeah. Uh, I think that's been a huge challenge in the especially the sense of getting to know your new colleagues and like information sharing, because before when you're in an office, you're constantly able to just have a coffee with someone from the development team mm -hmm. or someone who is, you know, creating a mob in the game. You have all these different people and you may just be chatting and give each other ideas in a very informal way. And mm -hmm. I, I'm really missing that uh, in the office, that sort of dropping by and, and seeing people. Yeah. So I think for me, I've had to really try to be more intentional of finding time to meet up and talk to different people around the company while also being a little bit like understanding of myself and everyone else that like adding another meeting is just hard right now. And so yeah. we're just, you know, everybody's trying to get to get through and knowing that soon we will all be together and, and see each other and then it will be great. But for right now, it is more more teams working yeah. um, together closer than obviously getting that um, that wider perspective of just getting to be around everyone. So I, I just I dream of the day of getting to go back into the office and it's there'll be so many new people and and people that I've worked with for years. And I think yeah. that's just a really exciting thing. I mean, we have people that have moved to Stockholm and I'm sure Redmond within the pandemic to work mm -hmm. on the team. So it's like, that's a whole, you know, that's a yeah, whole Yeah, 100%. Other... <laughs> I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. It's either, it's either a mantra or, or an initiative that you have at Mojang that's called Better Together, right? And that's about mm -hmm. promoting diversity. I mean, could you share a bit more information on, on what that is? Yeah, so, I mean, it's our diversity and inclusion uh, sort of group that's working together across the team to just think about all of this and propose new ideas. We decided to call it Better Together because we're always looking for how to make things feel Minecrafty. Mm -hmm. And to us, like Better Together represents the feeling of what diversity and inclusion should be. The end result is that yeah. you have more people with amazing ideas who are all working on the same goal, but who can bring it. their distinct <laughs> thinking and feelings <laughs> in. So I just, I mean, I always feel really excited now, like when we have groups talking across across the team, trying to make things better. And, and yeah. to me, it's always going, wow, it's better than it was when I was one woman on the team. Mm. But we still have a really far way to go. Like we still have teams that don't have a lot of women on them. And we, yeah. we still you know, are underrepresented with people of color on the team. And how do we change that? Because I want to work with people who are totally different from me yeah. so that I can learn from them and be better because I Absolutely. work with them. And so I, I think, you know, this year um, and especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, people have really, hopefully a lot of companies too have started 
really digging into what mm -hmm. they can do. I think for us, this has been something, you know, that's deeply rooted for a long time. I did have an amazing conversation uh, with a woman in Stockholm and she had asked me if I wanted to have a coffee with her. And she was like, I want to talk about women of color in tech. And I was like, oh, okay, that's not a space yeah, I'm that's familiar with as a, as, a, as a white woman. So I honestly felt a little like, oh, I'm kind of nervous about it. And she, she was just like, oh, I just love, you know, all of your experience and want to know what you've done with women in gaming space and, and tech. And she said, you know, just like white women need men to speak up for mm -hmm. them, like women of color need white women. Because when you say, oh, we want women on the team, yeah. that generalization and not thinking about uh, intersectionality and where mm -hmm. that my experience is totally different and my access and I just, it, that conversation was like the most, I think one of the most influential. It sounds in like such I, a catalyst of a conversation. To yeah. Have. And she's so amazing. And it's, it, I think it was like three years ago now. And she's always like, that conversation was so amazing for me. And I was like, wait, what? No, it was amazing for me. Um, so I just loved that, mm -hmm. like someone being able to make it so clear to me yeah. because I had always struggled with like, how do I advocate for? But I think the problem was I was stuck in that I would be speaking for, and that's not what I'm doing. I'm not saying nah. that I have the same perspective. I'm mm -hmm. saying that we need more women of color on our team. We need more yeah. people of color on our team. Mm -hmm. We need more diversity on our team. And I think and you that... mentioned something similar to this not too long ago, actually, about what one of the most important things to actually make that happen is, you know, noticing that there is a lack of minority and having the majority, this being, you know, men on your team, actually listening to that and actually understanding mm -hmm. a need for development. Um, and I just think that's really crucial. And I, I just wanted to sort of bring that out a little bit more that there is, there is one absolute absolutely certain way to make these things progress and that is for others who have it all to listen to open the doors to others yeah and I th I mean I think when she pointed that out to me that I needed to really think about it more broadly and I realized that in all the time that I kept saying we need more women on the team I we were bringing on mostly white women yeah and you know having this perspective of like no, you have to actually really work to make sure the team is diverse. And mm -hmm. I love things like that we're doing with Minecraft, like Hour of Code and coding and getting kids into gaming with Education Edition. It's like, yes. hopefully these are all my of favorite young... things, by the way. I am so into that stuff. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I, but I mean, hopefully all of these young these young women around the world see these examples mm -hmm. and it's why when we're working on Minecraft Live, which, which is our big show, is that we want to show developers who are women and we want to yeah. show a diverse team of artists and all different roles and jobs because ideally when you when you see people that well, look when you like see you, yourself exactly you yourself, see yourself yeah. and it, it's it's easier for you to envision yourself to be like that is something that i can achieve or i can attain because someone is already out there doing it and it just feels like you know that that barrier has already been smashed through and uh, i absolutely love that um that you that you think about that and you integrate it not only in the internal way that mojang and minecraft is run but externally as well mm -hmm. um and i think this is a really good moment to actually start talking about minecraft Minecraft in its many, 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 many forms, uh, because it's obviously the game, but also the opportunities it presents and specifically how it's grown over time. So given that this is the women of Xbox UK, we can't not start without talking about the Minecraft acquisition, which you mentioned really early on in this podcast mm -hmm. that you were actually a part of. So, I mean, I have no questions. Just what was that like? What was the day? What was the email? <laughs> I think the thing that made me start to feel really optimistic or as optimistic as you can feel when something that big happens that you weren't expecting is that um, myself and my colleague Owen were writing the the announcement for Minecraft.net to actually mm -hmm. say like we've been acquired which are or we were going to be because it was like we the news was going to break. Yeah. People had found out we does. needed to talk about it. Yeah. And 
you know, obviously that's a big sensitive topic and it's, you know, big for Microsoft and big for us. And we, we really wanted to take the approach of like, but for our community, this is a big deal and we need to be mm -hmm. as open and transparent and it, it can't feel like someone like checked off every sentence. Like it needs to feel like us. And yeah, a hundred percent through and through. And we were able to do that. And like, there were great articles around how like something must still be Mojang because we wrote this, this article answering all the questions. And it was mm -hmm. very transparent that like, even as like that the team was nervous and we were going to like work through it. And it, like the joke at the end was like how how much we sold for, which it was like, you know, I think I think I feel like Owen wrote a cool two point five billion. Um, you know, Amazing. but it's like that's not a normal way you would would write something like 100%, that. hundred so percent, yeah. Having worked on that in the middle of all of this like internal stress and team yeah. stress, but seeing like okay, our like our opinion and our our voice for here's like we know our community and here's mm -hmm. how we need to talk about it yeah. was listened to and so that was the first time i was like okay let's let's see how this works yeah and, and i imagine I mean, that like it's sort of like the the acquisition also brought with you more women that you were co-working with as well and like that suddenly added this whole new mix of diversity from external sources Exactly. I mean, I, I count that as one of the things that was best for me personally within the acquisition is just being able to have amazing women who were leaders in the company and leaders mm -hmm. across Microsoft and getting to to meet them and talk to them. And that was something that I hadn't really had a lot of in Stockholm because the one part about Mojang is we were this little little ragtag team, but we were also kind of like inside, like we didn't do things externally. Yeah. We weren't like super part of the gaming scene. So it was very much like we're, you know, it's us against the world. We've yeah. got this thing we need to protect, but it didn't give me a lot of opportunities to meet with amazing women and like be mentored and learn from them. And now, mm -hmm. I mean, for my, for my career since then, I've just had so many amazing women and our, our leadership team, which I'm part of is I think 50-50 split of women, which is Wonderful. really amazing and yeah. something I you know, never would have, would have thought. Mm -hmm. So I just love that, that working within that larger company context gave, gave me that in a really clear way. And like working with people who are incredibly uh, smart and talented and who, mm -hmm. you know, have like business degrees. I mean, you're talking <laughs> about like, we're, <laughs> we're like a, you know, again, a small team. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm sure they bought like a wealth of things. Like was, was there much that yeah. you learned from them? I imagine there was, you get this huge company acquire you all. Like what sort of things did you pick up from that acquisition that you're, you're still like sort of repeating and doing on a day to day basis now? Oh yeah, I mean, I think there's there's so many things because I think when you are able to blend that like Swedish and American culture yes, and like yeah. indie corporate, so like we can be a little more professional and work to really, you know, create amazing things. And to me, I think just, I learned so much about like business and, Mm -hmm. running a business and things we could do that really bring a lot of like structure and and working with incredible teams who sort of specialize and I think that's that was really interesting for me because when we were a small team you know you do whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever if there's a job and, needs doing you're there you'll do it <laughs> yeah I, I mean I would just be like I'm sure I could do that google <laughs> search how to <laughs> And then you can just do it until someone phone. tells you you've done it wrong. Like, just crack on. Exactly. <laughs> just keep going. Or like, here's what we're doing. So everything was just learning, mm -hmm. you know, on the fly. And so to have colleagues that really have a wealth of knowledge, but then that we could, that, you know, are that I feel I could balance by having, you know, a really clear passion and excitement for the brand. And yes, like, look, yeah. we're not doing everything 
the way that you would textbook do it. Mm -hmm. So like when, you know, very early on with the brand, we, we realized we didn't want to have one year where the only thing people talked about was Minecraft because mm -hmm. that would mean that we kind of like we hit the peak and there's nowhere to go and people so get think. tired. Like I can't hear about that game anymore. I don't want to. And so yeah. we very intentionally like stair stepped, like let's keep at, okay, we'll add more partners. We'll add more things. We'll, you know, mm. because we could have had that blowout year, you know, 10 years ago and yeah, totally. it could have fizzled, fizzled out. And I mean, gone. it's resurging so I, back in popularity now, even last year, maybe even the year alone, it was suddenly spiking all over Twitch and YouTube mm -hmm. as, as some of the biggest content creators uh, currently, you know, kicking about were, were playing the game. And that, that's just on the massive like eyeball vision. Like, I mean, working with, with Minecraft in the background, you've already mentioned that there's like a diversity when it comes to learning code and accessibility and educational tools. Um, I just wondered, sort of where where the um the sort of like the passion for that came from was it was it just looking at the game and realizing we could just do this easily or was that something that microsoft worked with you on well i mean so we always talk about how we feel like all the good ideas for minecraft come from the community mm -hmm. so like education edition came from teachers who loved using minecraft in the classroom oh, and shout out to the teachers let's go yeah you know <laughs> and so then when with the acquisition we were able to take that and turn it into a product that could go you know be in schools mm -hmm. all around the world with all different students God, and that teachers is using phenomenal it. access that is and and we have a we have a program with UN Habitat called Block by Block, and that was you know very tiny when we when we started at the company actually using Minecraft so people can participate in their public space and actually rebuild it in the real world. And mm -hmm. you know those are the things that I think you you needed someone to be excited and passionate about it. And I think that's how we've we've really come across a lot of ideas within the company is mm -hmm. someone on the team is really excited and wants to do it yeah. and that kind of takes you in all different directions and also you know really trying to listen and learn from our community having them be part of the development process so like mm -hmm. tell us what you think about this feature and not just shipping it and it's done mm -hmm. but instead like what do you what do you want to see? How and you know what? Work? I'm actually really glad you've mentioned the community. Um, we have another video we're going to watch here. And once again, I'm going to call out to make sure you'll come watching this on YouTube because not only do you get to see Lydia's wonderful hat and brooch, by the way, which is superb. Um, we're going to look at a trailer now. Um, as you did a little thank you for the community at the beginning of this year, uh, and you gave them a ton of content. And um, I mean, me personally, I played, I think it was... Um, it was Bloom, and it was like the swooping one. I cannot remember. It's Delta Terra, Force. Terraforce. Terraforce swoop. That's right? it. Terraforce. <laughs> that I have never had so much fun playing Minecraft, and the fact that it is the same game where I am unable to build a house correctly blows my mind. And I mean, do you want to share more information on how this community thank you came to be? And I mean, you've said it a few times throughout, but community really is integral to Minecraft. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always been something like we talked about from the beginning. And when I when I started, I was going to work with the community, but we didn't want to like we couldn't figure out a way to name that. So I was the director of fun, which is like not a great title, I'd say not not a serious person title. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but it was really about just like listening and and thinking about our community and keeping them in mind all the time because we have all of these players around the world and some of them a lot of them have played more than any of us even even those of us those of on the team who have been developing the game uh -huh, uh -huh. we have players who have played more and spent more time so i think we always wanted to not only respect that but also like think about the community as being our our greatest asset outside of the game oh i love the, it the, yeah. the ideas the inspiration i mean i the, this is like gonna sound really funny but i i i love looking at like the minecraft hashtag on instagram mm -hmm. because i just love seeing what people are doing especially the they're enthusiasm like small, people are just willing to like everyone look at what i'm doing and oh it's just things you love to see and you know 
I'm sure many people in the community are going to be listening to this, um, as many of them know and love you, Lydia. Um, so I'd feel remiss not to ask this next question, but um, what is the future? I know you obviously can't share tons of information, and I mean, we can touch very slightly on Minecraft Dungeons, which, by the way, my eight-year-old is so... We're playing on, like, Apocalypse 8 at the moment on Minecraft Dungeons, and she carries us. So, like, what, what, is, the, what is the future? What more can I do with my child, who is both so into coding and Minecraft Dungeons? I'm sorry, I'm taking the podcast in a very personal slant here, but I, I just need to know. That is okay. I mean, at the beginning, you said you could do whatever you wanted on this podcast, yeah. and now that is and I happening. am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think like with dungeons. Oh, yeah. I also love playing it so much. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm actually not very much of a multiplayer person, but I love playing dungeons multiplayer because mm -hmm. it's just so fun and everything's happening at once. So we have some awesome new DLCs coming. The team mm -hmm. is really working on like continuing to build out uh, the world. We announced at Minecraft Live that we're doing the Caves and Cliffs update, which that's going to be such a huge update that like, I remember the buzz around that was so huge last year. I just like, I have been waiting for so long because I am totally like an adventurer explorer in uh -huh. Minecraft and I just cannot wait. So I think that the, how much the team has built out is just really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, we have some more things in the pipeline. We just talked about recently uh, that we'll be doing a, a Minecraft Dungeons arcade game, which is super cool. Ooh. So that's really exciting. And like we've talked about an arcade style game with Minecraft for a long time, but we always kind of got stuck in like, but what is it that would feel authentic? And so yeah. it would either be like, um, you know, a mini game or something different. But with dungeons, it's perfect when you think of like playing an arcade type cabinet. Totally, like dungeons yes. is spot on. So it feels like we developed dungeons for that moment. It's very exciting. So lots, lots going on. I mean, I think because we always are updating and adding to our products, like mm -hmm. you talked about with the community celebration it was having our marketplace partners release these incredible things and i think because we have the community building all of these uh, incredible creations it just the minecraft universe should keep growing and expanding and feeling like it's always something big so 100 percent lots more lots more in the works amazing and i mean this is an, a very good i'm so good at running a podcast just honestly this is such a good segue into the person telling me that there's so much more to come is also as we said at the top of the podcast the person who holds the heart of minecraft so i want to talk more specifically about your role lydia as it is so unique to be a chief storyteller for a studio so huge and inspirational as mojang uh there is of course story elements to the game um you know the the particular credit scene at the end when she beat the ender dragon just being one of them as one example uh but you also mentioned before that it's about telling a story externally about mojang as a studio as well so um i suppose the first place to start here would be i know we had a little bit of a, an elevator pitch at the beginning but can you reiterate more on what it means to be a chief storyteller yeah, so when we were thinking about sort of uh, the evolution of my work at, at Mojang Studios, and like I said, I've done many different different things across the franchise, usually uh -huh. within the more brand space, which obviously I see uh, being chief storyteller within that area, is how can we really just keep this like passion and excitement for Minecraft, especially mm -hmm. in the things that our community does with Minecraft. So we, I mean, the amount of stories that I have heard over my 10 years of the impact people have had with Minecraft, being able to spend time with family members. One of my favorite things is around a little a, a, a little girl who was uh, came to Minecon as a Make-A-Wish um, 
for Make-A-Wish, she actually, her family talked about how impactful it was that in the hospital she plays Minecraft with her friends and she felt like everything was fine. I'm uh-huh. sorry, I'm sorry, Charlie. Oh, I could pull out some real tear jerk. I have like, such a I mean, sensitive spot there. Oh my goodness. I know, I know. Yeah, I, I try to always keep them like, <laughs> but it like really, I mean, just truly yeah. heartwarming things. And so I've always talked about them a lot. Um, like in Minecon and now Minecraft Live, it's like we we talk about our updates and what's coming and what's new, but we also show off the team. We talk about what we're doing in education. We talk about coding. We talk about sort of building a better world and making the world a better place. Yeah. So for me, I get to talk about that externally on things like this podcast. And that's what I've done for years, being on stage as a spokesperson. Mm. I mean, and we actually she- do have footage, by the way. If, if we Should we show everyone? We actually have a clip of you yeah, at sure. Minecraft Live 2020 um, and announcing new content. So let's take a look at this real quick. A new mob that will enter the game. So which one of you gets to do the honors today? I think Tiny Agnes has been a bit mean this year, so I think you should open it, Nina. You should announce the winner. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love this! I feel like I'm on a TV show or something. The music and all that, everything. <laughs> it's the glow squid! And there it is. <laughs> The glow, the glow squid. squid. So yeah, tell us what it's like to be part of something. As you say, Minecraft has a core audience. They go out and they do a big old bang with Minecraft Live. What was it like being there on that moment and being part of the team that just consistently gets to talk about Minecraft externally? Yeah, I mean, I think it's amazing. So with Minecraft Live, the thing that's quite unique is I am I'm hosting the event, so I'm there on uh-huh. stage, but I'm actually working on all of the creative. So, you know, Right now I'm working on what we'll be doing next Mm -hmm. and how we'll show things and which videos we'll have. And we have this, you know, whole team within Mojang Studios who are producing and deciding and building out the entire show. And so it's not, you know, I, I feel very lucky because I don't get to just, oh, here, you know, here, say these things. It's like all of it has been worked on. I've been part Mm -hmm. of it and it's such a fun and enjoyable thing to do. And then within the company, I think I've been working, you know, for years on sort of our 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 purpose, our vision, our values. Uh, tonight after this, we've started doing something called like a welcome to Mojang Studios online. Mm-hmm. And so I host that and kind of, you know, talk through. I want to go. How. <laughs> that sounds so good. <laughs> it's really fun. It's really fun. It, it's actually like my most inspiring moment uh, of the, the month outside of like community things. It's just uh-huh. like all these new people starting at Mojang Studios from around the world and then I ask like why did you want to work here and their answers are so good and I'm like well I've been working here for 10 years and I still want to work here and I still love it and so things like that become really important because I mean when we when we were acquired and it's still taking time six years later it's like nothing was written down we didn't have a playbook or plan or like who Mm -hmm. we were and so everything needs to be built and you need to take um, take all of the ideas and the things you've been saying for years and like, you know, turn them into things like guiding principles. Yeah, so like, the I mean, I can think it's really them. important to point out that like the the team who have been there, you having been there for 10 years, Mojang is what it is today because your passion and your enthusiasm and your spirit has been allowed to retain as organic and as authentic as possible. And as you say, you still see this nowadays by the community is reflecting that back to you and the company is like beaming it back to the community. And it's just this lovely sort of like warm sort of hug from from you all that I love. And I do have somewhat of a, I suppose, a difficult question in terms of your your role, which is, you know, there's there's the fun in games of the job and, and deciding, you know, how to be the, the chief soul protector of Minecraft. Um, but how do you manage it in terms of, you know, not everything obviously comes through the gates. I'm not asking you to tell us about stuff that didn't make the cut, but do you feel a tremendous amount of imp- like pressure or important when it comes to figuring out what is Minecraft? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that from the beginning, 
the, the sense of responsibility for all of us. I mean, maybe at the very beginning when we were all like, oh, we got 5 million sales. This is crazy. We've <laughs> peaked. I mean, we actually all thought that like we did it. Wow. We did it. And now I think the, the, I always try to keep a balance of thinking about the gravity of like, mm -hmm. oh, I get to work on something so big and so important and impactful while also remembering like, I get to work on a video game. How cool, you know, like this is yeah. entertainment and fun. So I kind of think it's keeping that tension between realizing the importance and like really all of us at Mojang Studios, like our job is to protect Minecraft, but it's also to grow Minecraft. Yes. And so I, I feel that that tension is where you, you can create the best things because you say, how can we be authentically Minecraft? Because like our community knows, they know if we've just done something kind of mm -hmm. quickly and we don't want that. We want everyone to be playing Minecraft and loving this game for, for generations to come. So that yeah, means you have to keep that mindset of, like I said earlier, not having that blowout year and then it's done. Yeah. Instead, it's like, we just keep, we just keep moving up you know, I mean, you keep saying to... you're doing these little steps, but I mean, I, I can't imagine what it's like. I'm going to try and get put my put myself in your shoes here. Minecraft being so core that Minecraft is Minecraft. Honestly, my mum, who doesn't play games, knows what Minecraft is because it's just yes. so <laughs> the world knows it around. Right. So what was it like? What was what? How, how did it reflect the studio when you came out with Minecraft Dungeons or Minecraft Earth, which is taking that core like internal property and then, as you say, expanding on it and doing something that makes sense in the community goes yes i know why you've done it and it works perfectly yeah i mean it takes that sort of thinking and protecting and like drawing from like vanilla minecraft mm -hmm. minecraft that that you play as families and friends and by yourself like you need to be able to recognize that when you are playing other things mm -hmm. and so it needs to feel like it's familiar yet new so there's that balance i think having a team that loves minecraft and is passionate about it obviously yeah. helps solve a lot of that we have um we have jeb who's just incredible and amazing jeb who everyone knows jeb gotta have a shout out for jeb on here there we go i'm glad we got that done that was my I next know. question <laughs> He's even more wonderful in real life. I, I love, bet. I love Jens. He's so great. And I think it's really cute when tiny kids are like, do you ever get to see Jens? And I'm like, Aww. yeah, he's he's a friend. I, I, and he's a colleague and friend. We've worked oh. together for 10 years now. Wow. You know, we are, we, we, I, I feel very fortunate to work with someone like him and, and across the team too. I mean, the, Again, like when you have colleagues who are so passionate and excited about mm -hmm. Minecraft, you can't help but be inspired. And even though I'm not a developer, I'm incredibly inspired by our team of developers and like how they think and how they plan what they're doing and how mm -hmm. they take input from the community and balance all these things. And the, you know, our teams working on all of our creative and our brand, it's just it's really amazing because everyone is putting themselves into their work in such a big way because they care about Minecraft. And I, yeah. I, yeah, I just, it's a, it's a real privilege to work on something as big as Minecraft. And I, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'll have that opportunity again because mm -hmm. it's not only that it's big, it's that it's highly, highly impactful. And yeah. I just, I love it still 10 years later. I just, I, I love it. I feel like I'll be a really old lady in the corner. Like <laughs> 30 years ago when we were making Minecraft, I'll be like, oh, when is that lady gonna retire? Goodness She's really me. holding us back. <laughs> I mean, talking, at, you know, we, we, I spoke about this very briefly with Louise in the last episode, but the idea of mentorship and you're talking about being a retired old lady, uh, still playing Minecraft down the future, like uh, sort of where does uh, mentoring come into what you do and, and the future of Mojang and Minecraft and, and ensuring that that heart and soul you've protected continues over many, many generations? Yeah, I mean, I think it is hopefully, you know, people feel like 
across Mojang Studios that we have a, a leadership team that's accessible. Uh, mm -hmm. I this kind of similarly to when people talk about Jens, it's like, oh, have, how often do you get to see like Jonas, the CEO, is like of of Mojang in Stockholm? It's like up all the time. You know, I could reach out to him at any moment, as uh -huh. could anyone across the, the company yeah. um, and across the Mojang Studios team. And I feel like that's quite unique, especially as we've grown to really be able to have like in Stockholm, we still have a Monday meeting every week. <laughs> and even though we've grown, we're a big company and it's just like we go through, here's what's happening. So I think it's balancing that big company, little company feel, like yeah. taking the best from both things and merging it into something, you know, really, really great. And I now maybe that was not at all the answer to your question, actually. <laughs> I, like, I mean, to be honest, you've, you've answered so much and I, I could talk to you for hours, but I have feeling that we're going to have to call it here and maybe I'm just going to have to get you on for every single season going forward. Just to be honest, just talk uh, about Minecraft, if that's all right. I will sign up for that 100%. Perfect. Well, thank you I'm so in. much for joining me today. It's been amazing to talk to someone with such a unique journey into the industry as well. And for anyone listening, I'd like to really pinpoint that this shows that there is no written directory on how to get into the games industry. A passion, an enthusiasm, and a willingness to put yourself out there will get you where you need to be even if it does invite an investment uh into pink wigs but less on that um before you go as i mentioned earlier on we do need one more thing from you and that is your question for our next guest i'm not going to say who it is and you can obviously ask whatever you like no matter how challenging or simple it is so what is your question lydia I picked a much nicer question than uh, what was a confession that I'm like, oh, did I? Yeah, I did talk about Christmas movies. Oh, no. So my question for <laughs> next, the next person is, what have you been doing to stay creative in these challenging times? You are just, you are the best. Do you want to host this podcast with me? Because you have such yes. good questions. <laughs> right, sorted, deal. I would deal. love to. We have that on Char camera. It's Charlie recorded. and Lydia's podcast. I'm totally in, 100%. So oh, we will I have this set up now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. I cannot wait to see how our next guest will answer that question. And obviously, if you want to find out, you'll have to listen to the next one yourself. Uh, thanks again for joining us. To everyone at home, Home if you're watching our lovely faces over on the Microsoft UK YouTube channel or listening to one of uh, listening on one of our many homes, we got Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I imagine I said that correctly. Anyway, uh, anywhere Everywhere. podcasts are available, make sure you are giving us a download and a listen. But I will see you on the next episode. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Bye.